Good evening. Welcome to Apostasy Alert. I'm your host, Jackie Alnor. And what I'd like to do tonight is play a portion of an interview that I did over the phone with Brittany Coper, the granddaughter of the founders of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Jan and Paul Crouch, who is involved in all this litigation back and forth over uh, her trying to bring TBN into some state of accountability. As many of you know, because not only have I talked about it, but it's been in the news for, for quite a while now, is that Brittany was um, working at TBN as the chief financial officer and found so many wrong things in the in the books that she just, you know, had to bring them to account for and they would have no accountability to her or anyone else. And so, of course, she became their enemy and they uh, terminated her. And not only did they fire her, but they also fired her father, Paul Crouch Jr., who was almost single-handedly running the network for quite some time because of the feebleness of his father, Paul Crouch. And uh, also, as we're going to find out, even her brother Brandon was let go after Brittany filed her lawsuits against a couple of TBN lawyers that had um, been working on behalf of TBN to help cover up the, the, the dirty business going on behind the scenes. You know, you've heard me speak for so long against the, the her heresies and the, and the evil um, uh, claims of the prosperity gospel and the abuse and the fleecing of the sheep of God. And I've been talking about those things for so long. And yet, the, for years, I've been hearing rumors of some of the most vile wickedness one can imagine against the, the Crouch family, Jan and Paul and, and, and Matthew Crouch as well. And you know, and I haven't reported on that much because I just felt it had to be, those things had to be confirmed by more than one witness. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Brittany is the second witness of these, um, to see these events firsthand. The first witness being Kelly Whitmore back in around 2005 when she, she was the assistant of Jan Crouch and she came forward with a lot of information that was quite frankly, so shocking that it, would, it, it came close to being unbelievable that I was concerned about reporting it back then. Even when I wrote my book, The Fleecing of Christianity, I left out all of those rumors of, of Jan's promiscuity and Paul Crouch's bent towards, uh, towards same-sex attraction and, and all of these horror stories and and the, and the thugs that, that they would use to intimidate people, all of things like this. I just dealt with what I could see and document on Christian television as I've been documenting it and taping it for 25 years now. So I didn't want to touch those things. But now that the second witness and even more viable witness has come forward, Brittany Coper, I think I can freely speak on some of these things because we already know that the Crouch's theology is corrupt, but any time doctrine is false, so is uh, is is the morality of the people who are proclaiming it. That just seems to be a given. And now we know from her testimony as a second witness that these things are reliable. Until just recently, Brittany was under a court um, restraining order put on her by TBN not to speak to anybody about them or anything. And then when it lifted, it gave us the opportunity to talk freely. She won't be talking about the, uh, the, the details of the court case, but she will speak, as you will hear, just about the interaction in her family and the different things going on behind the scenes. Now, I found Brittany to be intelligent, articulate, and a highly educated woman. She has a master's degree. She's very brave to do what she is doing. And people who have accused her of being after the money, they are they have nothing to stand on, considering the fact that she was in a very high position at TBN and was positioned to where she could live like the king and queens that they live. But she chose truth rather than to go along with their sin and to be an accomplice to the crime they've done against the body of Christ. So without further ado, here's Brittany. I'm doing the right thing. Like, this is the right thing to do. Um, I, I, and, and that's why I'm able to continue doing it. You, you know, despite the, the 
you know, rash of, of lawsuits and all these, you know, flying accusations and, you know, every day being another, you know, sparring match with, you know, my, my family. So, um, yeah, it's just it's kind of, it's, it's a long road, but I'm definitely in it for the long haul. You know, I, I'm certainly not doing this to try and, um, you know, quote unquote, you know, get a big payday. Like everybody's like, oh, she just wants a payday. And it's like, no, you know, it, believe me, um, there are easier things in life to do <laughs> in order to, to earn a living. And um, I'm really doing this to, um, I think the world needs to know. You know, I really think that, um, I really feel convicted to to tell the truth and, and to stand up for what's right. You know, TBN has bullied so many people over the past 30 years, they've, and they've gotten away with it because they are scary people. They're terrifying, and they have endless funds to to, you know, continue their reign of terror, and they've been able to intimidate people and, um, you know, scare them into keeping quiet and spend money on attorney fees to get them to keep their mouth shut. And unfortunately for them, you know, I'm not easily intimidated, and that's not going to happen. Who do you see? Of the, me? I'm sorry. Who, sorry. who do you see as the biggest, as the one um, calling these shots to, to be intimidating to people, you know, of your relatives? Um, Oh, gosh. Uh, well, right now, I really see it as um, my Uncle Matt. Um, you know, he's, he's a very vengeful person, and, um, and this, is, this is personal for him. You know, I, I um, quote-unquote, blew the whistle on, you know, many of the, the illegal things that were happening in regards to his income, like, you know, for example, his income was not reported on their 990s, and that was one of the things I was bringing, bringing up and going, what's going on here? Um, the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of payments to his for-profit company, which were not properly reported on their on TBN's 990s and are legally required to do so. Um, so he, I, he has it out for me. You know, this is, this is a personal vendetta um, that he, he is waging against me, and, um, you know, he and my grandmother have a very um, interesting relationship, a very close relationship, and um, so she's supporting him, and, and there you have it. There's two members of the, of, of the board of directors of the three, so it's a majority of the board. Um, I also feel like it's, it's um, PBN's general counsel, John Casoria. Um, he's, he's calling a lot of these shots. I mean, he's their general counsel. If, if TBN were doing something that were not in the best interest of TBN, it's his job to speak up and say otherwise. And, you know, he's not. He's continuing down this road. And the further they go, the, you know, the more they're going to be exposed. And that's, that's fine with me because that's, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do anyway. My grandparents have not spoken to me or um, really anybody in my family since October. Um, it's, it's very odd. You know, it's, it's like it's like I'm, like I'm dead to them. And it's just, it's, at first it was very hurtful, you know, because I was very close to my grandmother, especially when I was in high school and college. Um, and, and for some reason she just totally cut me out of her life. And, you know, I've reached out to her, I've called her, I, you know, we used to exchange text messages all the time. And, you know, I love you, Grandma. And, and um, Thanksgiving was definitely very, very hard for me. It was a very emotional day. Um, just because it was the first Thanksgiving, you know, I haven't had my grandmother's stuffing and, and just silly stuff like that. And, and it was it was devastating, really, you know. And, and then Christmas came and got, went, and, and, you know, I was the only person in my family. My grandmother didn't, you know, she bought everybody these personalized Bibles. They're actually very beautiful. <laughs> um, but she bought everybody in my family a, a personalized Bible for Christmas, but I didn't get one. Um, and I, I sent her a text message on Christmas Day, and I said, um, I said, I love you so much, Grandma, no matter what. Thank you so much for teaching me about Jesus. And I, I, I haven't received any reply. So yeah. I just I stopped trying. I figured, um, you know, she would, she would contact me when and if she was ever ready. Um, you know, my birthday came and went. I didn't hear anything in the first year. 27 years, I didn't receive balloons on my birthday from my grandma. But can you confirm that Jan and Paul haven't um, been together as a married couple in quite some time? 
Um, I know ever since I was a little girl, they never lived together. So, I, you know, I, what, what goes on behind closed doors, you know, I, I don't really, I can't really testify to because I, you know, I was never around that. But I, I do know that it was always, Grandma had her house and Papa had his house, and that's just the way it was. So, and I never really asked questions. It's just the way it always has been. I feel like I'm doing the right thing. This, this is the right thing to do. Um, they've been getting away with a lot of, a lot of things that need to be exposed that are not only illegal but absolutely unconscionable. And um, and and it, enough is enough. You, you know, it's it's just well, where does it end? So, you know, if if they want to, you know, continue to make threats against me, you know, that that's that's their prerogative. You know, I. I love them no matter what. I always will. Um, if I saw my grandma tomorrow, I'd run up to her and give her a hug and tell her how much I loved her and, and I've missed her. Um, so I really, you know, I really hold no grudges. Um, but at the same time, I, you know, I'm not going to, to give in to, to something that, that is, in my mind, an injustice. Can you, re- so, can you confirm if that Matthew Crouch is not Paul Crouch's biological offspring? <laughs> um, I haven't seen paternity test results or anything like that, but I do know, I can say that I have had conversations with, with my grandmother on more than one occasion when, you know, when she, you know, we were out together or having dinner together. Um, I, in fact, one of the conversations was in her house in Orlando. But, um, you know, she basically, she's admitted to me and, and others more than once that um, Matthew is the product of an affair she had with... Um, Mr. America, 1954. His name was Dick Dubois. Um, Do you think that's why she is more partial to Matthew because of his absolutely, paternity? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, I think I think Matthew is. You know, from what she's told me, you know, he's her love child, and um, that's why he's been able to get away with you know so much, so so much of this you know cutting corners and and um, you know uh, contract to produce you know million dollar movies. Uh, there's there's no way um, they would have agreed to do that if my dad, you know, with my dad's production company, and he had a production company for a long time that did not do any work for TBN. Um, and and she's, you know, she's protecting her her love child, for, for lack of a better word. Does do you think that Paul Senior knows about this? No, absolutely not. You don't think he knows that that's not his true son? Um, I don't think. If he does, he's in denial about it. You know, um, my grandparents, they live in their own reality. Um, they kind of make up their own rules, what, are they, what they want to believe. Um, and so uh, if he was made aware of it at some point, um, he's completely blocked that out. Um, they're very narcissistic people, obviously. You know, they're, they, again, they live in their own reality. They make up their own rules, and, and clearly, the last 30 years, um, not even the laws have applied to them. So, so you know, why wouldn't they um, make that comparison? You know, they, they, there's been nobody there that's been um, able to or or willing to hold them accountable to, to any sort of standards, guidelines um, for, for anything they do. So, so it certainly doesn't surprise me that, that, you know, she would make a statement like that. How does Jan respond to people who do um, make fun of her for the, for crazy wigs and her eyelashes and the way she dresses. Um, she, she, you know, they're all evil. They're all of the devil, and uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> she doesn't see yeah. something wrong. She doesn't look in the mirror and say, "Eesh, this isn't the a good representation." You know, I did. I asked that one time. I was having a conversation with my dad. I was just like, "Dad, like, what? What's the deal? I mean, really? Like, it's just it. You know, it takes her two hours to get dressed." Um, you know, why does she look like that? And my dad's just kind of like, you know, I don't really know. But and, and he said, but it's it's been like a, a progression. He said, you know, if she would have walked in looking the way she does now, uh, 15 years ago, we all would have gone, oh my gosh, you know, what what happened? But it was kind of a slow um, progression into what it is now. And and um, you know, people will always go, oh, your grandma looks like Tammy Faye, and I'm like going, Tammy Faye, Tammy Faye looks normal to me you know <laughs> like granted she, she wore some eye, you know eyeliner and eyelashes but yeah. but how do you even compare the two i mean it's just uh, and the way she I don't know. she isn't responsible for the 
horrible decorations of like the Bear Avenue place particularly looks like oh, a yeah. cheap French brothel. <laughs> and, and, and you know, how do people walk yeah. through there with a straight face? I guess it's hard for me to fathom. Um, you know, I don't know. It's 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 kind of like stepping into into an alter universe. You know, it's like you kind of go there to be entertained and and to see see everything, and and then it's like okay, let's let's step back into reality again and you know move on with our lives. But but it's you know it's for show, and um, it is what it is, I guess. And and my brother is actually um, he's he's working at a church in Santa Monica right now. Um, as part of, you know, the retaliation against me, of course, they fired him, and, and he and his wife went up to Santa Monica, and they're, they're actually doing great. He's working for a church up there and, and oh. helping my dad out at the Word Network. And What was the timing um, of when they right? let him go? Um, right, at, like, around the same time they let my dad go, probably in October of 2011. Which, and then, how did um, he feel? Um, everybody was just very confused about everything, and, and he's hurt. You know, he's, he's hurt because at the end of the day, these people are just your grandmother and, and your uncle and your grandfather, and, and for some reason they won't speak to him. And, and he's, like, going, well, like, what? Like, like I, you know, I don't understand, and, and none of us really understand, to be honest. Um, it's really sad, and, and there's no reason for it. You know, we, we've been blessed with good health and time, and, and it's definitely time that that could be spent together as a family, and, and for some reason that's not happening. Yeah. What What about this Jesus character at the Holy Land experience? I I see. I saw on the behind the scenes. So see, I watched the show. Like I said, you don't. Yeah. And she was sh- doing this whole tour of behind the scenes, arm in arm with this guy, like snuggling with him through this whole thing. It was like shocking how indiscreet it was. Um, do you have any insights oh, into that? Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it was, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was very bizarre to me because, you know, when I would go and visit my grandmother in Orlando, you know, he was always around. Um, and, and they would hold hands and, and walk together. And, um, and you know, I, I witnessed them, you know, snuggling, exchanging kisses. And, and I'm like going, what, what in the world? <laughs> and, and, um, you know, I, I asked her about it. I said, Grandma, what are you doing? And she, she said, um, she goes, oh, I kiss everybody on, on the lips. And oh. I said, what? She said, yeah, you know, I kiss everybody on the lips. It's not a big deal. It doesn't mean anything. And it's like, uh, I, I don't know. It, it, very, it made me very, very uncomfortable. Does he, um, does I, that, I can say that. What's his name? His name is Les. Oh. Um, and, and he's actually, it's very sad because, you know, he's, um, He's got a beautiful wife and three beautiful children, and and you know here he is, you know clearly having an inappropriate relationship with my grandmother, oh. um, and you know he he doesn't leave her side. It's like she travels somebody she, somewhere, she takes less with her. Both my grandparents do drink alcohol on a regular basis. Uh, my grandfather unfortunately has a horrible addiction to alcohol that um, that has really deteriorated his brain. You know he's just not not the person he used to be. Um, you know, he definitely has difficulty remember things, remembering things on an hour-to-hour basis, if not day-to-day basis, which made, you know, my your job there at the company <laughs> very difficult when, when, you know, he tells you to do something, and the next day he's like, why the heck did you do this? Oh. Um, and then you just kind of go, uh, uh, wait a minute, you told me to. <laughs> oh, and, you know, he, I did not, and it's like, oh, my gosh. I... I really love my grandfather, and I really miss him a lot. Um, I think that he's been so manipulated by by my grandmother that that you, you know his he's he's not mentally sharp, and so he's easily controlled by fear. Um, his he's easily manipulated into believing things that maybe not necessarily aren't, aren't true. Um, and and you know regardless of any personal downfalls he may have or, or, or things he's struggling with in his life. He, you know, I really miss him. Like, I, I, I always felt like I had a special connection to him, and, um, and I really love him a lot. And I, and, I, and I hope to someday, you know, be, ha- at least have a, a relationship to be his granddaughter <laughs> again because he's, he's pretty funny, you know, and he tells some, some really funny stories and, and um, 
that, I think that's definitely what I what I miss the most about um, being in California. You know, nothing would make me happier than to see PBN in the hands of somebody who would who would um, run it properly and and um, do right by the employees and and um, and really make it a, a wonderful thing. You know, spreading hope and inspiration instead of you know prosperity gospel and and. Um, and hopefully, you know, God willing, um, that'll happen someday. <laughs> I remember one year um, I was in personnel and I, you know, I fought to um, have my grandpa. It, like the holiday fell on kind of a funny day where it, like I guess the hol- Christmas day was going to be on Friday and, and so Christmas Eve was going to be on Thursday. So I asked my grandfather if it would be okay to get, to allow the employees to have Christmas Eve off as well as a holiday. And, and he, he reluctantly agreed eventually. And, um, and then, you know, my grandma found out about it and was so angry with me and, um, you know, called my grandfather all upset because, you know, TBN would be losing so much money um, if we gave the employees a day off. And um, and, <laughs> and so my grandfather ended up canceling. He, he granted it as a holiday. And then at the last minute um, on, you know, December 23rd at 3 p.m. sends an email out to all the employees saying, Christmas Eve is canceled as a holiday. You all need to come to the office. Oh, and it was just like, oh, my God. Gosh, oh, like I just I felt oh. so bad. I wanted to crawl under the table. Oh, um, that's horrible. Yeah, and, and so it's just you know it's just stuff like that that it's just like it wouldn't it wouldn't really cost them anything. You know, it, it's a soft cost to, to give that day off so, so people can spend time with their families. And and of course, um, you know, they they ended up taking it away at the last minute. And you know, I don't know. My grandparents just they see employees as a liability. Um, I, I heard one one person put it put it very, um, I guess, honestly and truthfully when he said, you know, like Jan treats her dogs better than she does her employees. And and to be honest, it's true. <laughs> I, I would always joke with my grandma and go, you know, if if I could do it all over again, I'd, I'd ask God if I could just come back as one of your dogs because <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, feeding them, you know, leftover filet mignon and all this other <laughs> wonderful stuff. <laughs> Have you ever thought of telling your grandfather? The, the situation with the Matthew Krauts thing, because believe me, that is the most shocking I've thing tried. of all. I've tried. They have him locked down. I mean, not even my dad can get a hold of him. So, and I'm like going, Dad, you know, please, somebody needs to tell him. Um, and not even my dad can get a hold of my grandfather. So, you know, they, you know, my grandmother and my uncle have been so surrounded and, and inaccessible to, to anybody else in the family, um, I think, to keep him in the dark about a lot of this. Oh, it seems like he's the he's the, uh, the the biggest sucker. You know what I mean? It just seems yeah. that way. Oh. Very naive. Very naive. Yeah, yeah. But you know, my grandmother, she I mean, she really puts it on. You know, she, oh, honey, I love you, and it's like, you know, I, I don't know. I was I was deceived for a long time too. You know, I I thought my grandmother was just the most incredible person in the world, and you know, she she doesn't even talk to me anymore. So you know, I don't know. She's very talented. Do you think that that there will be people that could end up once this thing all plays out that could end up in well? In, I in a I criminal? do know that um, the Orange County District Attorney's Office and the U.S. Attorney have um, I guess deployed a joint task force to you know do an investigation and and I have been cooperating with them and I will continue to co- cooperate with them as they work through the process to see you know what they feel you know what crimes have been committed and and um, to hold, I guess, the responsible parties um, accountable. If you just tuned in, that was an interview I was having on the phone last night with Brittany Coper, the granddaughter of Paul and Jen Crouch of the Trinity Broadcasting Network. I apologize for the bad quality of sound. For the telephone was just making a hum or something, and it just couldn't be avoided. But anyway... I would like to summarize what we learned. This was a very shocking testimony. Some of the things we learned was that Paul and Jan have not lived together as a couple in decades, that their relationship on on the air is a sham, that Matthew Crouch is the product of adultery and not Paul Crouch's biological son. Jan, still in her old age, is in an adulterous relationship. Paul Sr. is a drunk. Um... And both Jan and Paul are tyrants as bosses over at TBN. 
And it was interesting to learn that the U.S. Attorney's Office is investigating for potential criminal action upon not only the Crouches, but also um, the, the other relative, John Casoria, possibly, and, and of course, Matthew Crouch, and who knows how far it can spread. All I know is that this is a, um, a another uh, scandal, like we've had so much in the, in the recent past, that has turned even the world's view of Christianity into disrepute. I'd like to read a portion of a commentary that was written by a TBN employee who must remain anonymous or he will lose his job if anyone there at TBN knows that he supports Brittany. He said, God raised Esther up for a specific purpose at a specific time. We all know the story. It is written in the pages of the Bible. But maybe God is doing something now, something similar, something significant, right before our eyes, and we are missing it. Maybe Brittany Crouch Coper is a modern-day Esther. Who else could be brought into the inner circle, see the things no one was meant to see, and told to play the game? But then something happened which nobody expected. She refused to be corrupted. She has sacrificed money, reputation, status, and family to take a stand for what is right. Could it be that God has placed her there for such a time as this? No ministry becomes corrupt overnight. It is a process which takes time. Little decisions, little compromises, and then the slippery slope to decline. During this decline, where have been the mighty men of God? Where have been the prophets? Where have been those that would speak up and stand for what is right? Has everyone been blinded, or have they just winked at what they saw and heard? In his wisdom, God raised up a young woman to say no. Well, is this comparable to the story of Esther? It seems that Esther was trying to save her people. And uh, I think that things have gone too far now that the enemy seems to have won this battle against Christianity, really, by raising up TBN to this extent in spreading error and in showing Christianity in a false light. And so I don't, I'm not as optimistic as that man. I don't see that uh, TBN can be used as a vessel of honor for God's purposes when it has, from the beginning, seems to have been a vessel of dishonor that has been used by the enemy to corrupt even the image of Christianity globally. However, like Esther, Brittany is certainly God's chosen vessel to bring the hidden things of darkness to the light. So please keep her in prayer. And until next week, keep on the lookout.